Red Star Radio. Red Star Radio. Red Star Radio. Voice of the Revolution. Revolution. That regressive left thing reminds me of another reactionary trend that has been picking up a lot of steam as of late. There's a couple different terms for it. There's colonial feminism, which is basically feminism that is perpetuated as a kind of a mass to slip in arguments in favor of imperialism and, and colonizing the third world. But there's a kind of a LGBT corollary to colonial feminism called homo-nationalism. And homo-nationalism is basically the idea, kind of like colonial feminism, that social progress is something that has only happened as a result of enlightened Western society, and that therefore anyone who wants to be socially liberal, socially progressive, has to support basically the Western dominance over the world over all these backwards people who can never, you know, liberate themselves. And when you think about it, that's basically the, the kind of message, I mean, maybe it sounds kind of extreme when I put it that way, but that's basically the message that's being put forward by all these, uh, you know, fake left liberal types like Bill Maher, even uh, yeah. Richard Dawkins in a way, definitely Sam Harris. Yeah, this again goes back to my point how like the alt-right, pretty much a lot of them rose out of new atheism because they thought yeah. the only thing that makes you a leftist is if you're an arrogant uh, atheist guy that constantly shits on religion, only to realize that, hey, you're pretty, you're from a pretty privileged position yourself to be talking those things. Yeah, definitely something that goes hand in hand with the whole new atheist thing. And I, I find it particularly troubling as of late, um, ever since the Orlando shooting, because that had a very obvious opening in it for homo nationalists. It was a guy of Afghani descent. He was actually from the U.S., but his parents were from uh, Afghanistan. And he shot up a gay club. Um, he probably did it because he was gay himself and he had all these you know, contradictions and feelings and stuff, why not? But basically, the, the right or the alt right or whatever just just pounced on this right away and started, you know, screaming about regressive leftists, how they're, you know, betraying um, precious white women and our precious white gays in favor of coddling for Muslims and shit like that. And I saw this video of Milo Yiannopoulos, you know, our oh boy with um, Gavin McInnes as well. And he, he, I guess he flew to the States to give some dumb impromptu speech and these people are standing behind them they're like oh we love you Milo and they hold up this flag and I'll never forget this this is the most abominable thing I've ever seen it was a Gadsden flag superimposed over the pride colors I was like what the fuck is this I generally get a little ticked when I see like you know a gay person flirting with alt-right beliefs not because like I know better than a gay person and I'm gonna choose their beliefs but you're kind of flirting with people who most of the time are going to hate you for your soul existence and your sexuality the only reason why they might be coddling to you is because they just want to use you against Muslims and then pretty much throw you under the yeah. bus well back to colonial feminism though because that that's been going on I think kind of longer than homo nationalism so, like I said, uh, colonial feminism, basically the same type of idea, but only with um, using women's struggles as a way to propagate imperialist uh, attacks uh, on third world countries and whatnot. Um, it's something that has come up in Canada in particular with um, the last uh, Quebec government. Um, basically, after the student movement brought down the Quebec liberal government, they elected an, a new government that was the Sovereignist Parti Québécois. And yeah. what they did was, in order to um, bring up a wedge issue to divide Quebec against the rest of Canada, they wrote up this, um, uh, this law called the Charter of Secular Values. And basically, one of the the big controversial part of it was um, to say that uh, anyone who works in the public service is banned from wearing ostentatious religious symbols. And of course, ostentatious, it turns out, means basically non-Christian. Like, the crucifix is okay, but a hijab would be ostentatious. Right. So the point when with um, shit like that, the homo-nationalism and colonial feminism is that 
people in these countries, even if they're, you know, Muslims, which are basically, um, you know, apparently they, they think that they can just never progress socially without um, a white man sticking a gun to their head and telling them to modernize. They have been modernizing right. um, for the longest time. If you look at Iran or Afghanistan, you can see pictures of, of there before the women were um, forced to, you know, start wearing more... Um, clothing covering up with hijabs and shit like that yeah. it was before you know the u.s started uh, fucking around and and leaving them with uh islamic theocratic governments Love.